three years of compulsory military service, Israeli men are obliged to leave their families and businesses and serve 42 days each year on reserve army duty. This is the story of Major Amir Zohar, who was drafted for routine reserve duty on the 1st of November 2000 at the Elisha River Army Base. That night, Palestinians attacked the base, and while trying to protect it, Amir, commanding the force, was killed. It was about here. Amir stood here, I think, something like that. Everything's changed here, but I think it was here. Here is where he got killed. It was a Tuesday, around quarter to six, six, something like that. Amir was fending off the attack for about half an hour, 45 minutes, when he raised his head during the mission and screamed, I've been hit. And then he fell. When I saw Amir, the area was lit up, and I saw his face. He was lying on the mound. He wasn't screaming, as if nothing had happened, as if he was calm. But he wasn't moving. And then I understood that there's something wrong here, that he's badly hurt, or maybe even dead. <laughs> I remember my parents bringing the uniform on Saturday night, all ironed, and I said to Amir, you'll have to talk to them about the fact that they're going to have to help me. And it's really weird, as if it was pretty clear to me that something would happen. You don't fully understand until it really happens. It was a horrible night. The end of the world. It's beyond one's ability to grasp. They say the end of the world, but it really is the end of the world. It's the end of the world that there's nothing after that. There are lots of good memories. I think I'll always miss him. Mom, who's older? Me or Alon? You came out one minute before. But who's older? You're both the same. Come on! Tamar, you're the same. You're twins. You were in my stomach at the same time and you came out at the same time. That's not true. Come on, Tamar, really. You're older than him by one minute. You see, I'm older. Amir was born to a pioneer family in Kibbutz Galon. His grandfather Moses escaped the Nazi Holocaust and was among the founders of the small kibbutz, striving to maintain good relations with the neighboring Arab villages. Zohar. Amir Zohar. That's what appears on Amir's personal detail card. This card file contains every personal detail, all the children who were born on kibbutz. There's a different box for those who remain on the kibbutz, and those who leave are in a different box. <laughs> Da 
Galon was considered a new kibbutz and we wanted to be a community of new immigrants. Life was hard on the kibbutz. It was a wilderness, a genuine wilderness, full of caves and snakes. We didn't have an easy life. But we were glad we were living in Israel and that we hadn't been captured by the Nazis. Amir and Orly used to go to almost every peace rally. They always identified with the peace camp, and it didn't come as a surprise to us that he went to speak to the people of Tsor Bahar village and its Arab leader. On the contrary, it was just like him. He was never an extremist. He was always a man of compromise. He got that from his grandfather. His grandfather was the kibbutz administrator for many years, and he always said, listen first, then say what you have to say, whatever you do. First listen to what the other has to say. I have this image in my head. One winter, when we lived opposite our parents, and I don't know how, some orphan Arab boy was roaming the street, and it was very cold. It was snowing, and we took him in, and he was frozen, simply frozen. In the end, we took him to the orphanage in the eastern part of the city. But I remember, first we thawed him out from the cold. That was Amir. It's understanding, but it's something he grew up on. It's something we grew up on. It's understanding that before you stands a human being. Treat him like a person. You don't treat him based on who he is or how he threatens you at the moment. At this moment, he's just a human being, and he needs your help. Shortly before Amir was killed, an atmosphere of tension and hostility swept through the Jerusalem area. Amir, being a community activist and a follower of the biblical tradition of tikkun olam, healing the world, initiated peaceful meetings between the Jewish and Arab neighbors. Jews and Arabs are gathering in Jerusalem. The Jewish community leaders from Armona Natsiv are meeting with the residents of Sur Baher. A week ago, in this place that separates the two neighborhoods, Arabs were throwing Molotov cocktails. Both sides were throwing stones. Now they want to prove to the extremists that things can be done differently. Amir, may he rest in peace, took the plate of sweet pastries and passed it around to Jews and Arabs. He felt that it was he, supposedly, who was responsible for the real coexistence from the start, and I had tears in my eyes. There's no doubt that the gathering such as this, between residents from both sides of the boundary, this imaginary boundary that doesn't exist, you can see the houses are next to each other, even a meeting like this one can begin to create the right atmosphere for future cooperation. Every morning I leave the house around 9 a.m. 